For this demonstration, I'll be drawing a red apple on blue paper using Prismacolor pencils and a colorless blender. I like to start with some of the lighter colors first, um, although in Prismacolor you can draw light on top of dark, but obviously you will never achieve complete uh, coverage with the light pencil. Even though I'm going to be um, covering this all with the yellow, I am trying to pay attention to the contours of the apple and uh, adding a little density with the yellow even though it's still my first layer. But keeping everything sheer and with a light touch, I'm able to add other colors um, on top of that yellow and build up the values and the colors in order to make them as realistic and have as much volume and 3D qualities as possible. So I've left the yellow and I'm working now with an orange because this apple has a very nice rich red undertone and the yellow and the orange will be kind of, um, it'll add to the glow of that red apple. Um, remember that anything in nature is generally not just a flat color. And when you're creating um, an artistic piece, whether it's with colored pencil or with paint, you always have to think about the colors that should be used when you're creating something from life and that things are not just flat colors. You um, Obviously there's a, a mixture of colors and in something organic like an apple um, they're all going to be different but they're all going to um, have depth of color that can only be achieved using a variety of colors. So you're going to see me use many different shades of red, you're going to see uh, yellow, orange, I'm going to be burnishing, which if you remember from the other videos, is using a lighter color on top of a darker color in order to mash up the colored pencil so it, it has a smoother look, but also it will lighten um, the value. And sometimes it's a nice way to blend edges. As you see, I have created a hard edge between the yellow and the red and I'm using the orange to kind of burnish over that and make that edge between the yellow and the red a little less harsh. Uh, I am starting to add a little more density here, but I'm very far from finished. As you'll see in this video, even though it's been sped up, uh, I'm spending a lot of time making sure that my colors are accurate and that they represent what I'm looking at. And I'm also trying to apply the color in, um, that mimics the contour of this form that I'm drawing because I'm drawing something that I want to look three-dimensional but I only have two dimensions to work with. The, the, um, I have the paper's width and the paper's length. So the best way for me to do, uh, to do this and to try and make it look three-dimensional is to also keep in mind that the, con that the apple has contour and that it is three-dimensional. So as I apply the color I'm trying to pay attention to that. Um, you can see that the color is now starting to build up, but again, I've got a long way to go. And I'm, I usually keep a couple pencils in my hand as I work back and forth between them. So I'm always using my eyes to look at my object. You see the real apple that's above my drawing paper right there, and then you see a photograph of the apple in the picture-in-picture picture on the right which um, I did not draw from, I drew from real life, but this gives you the opportunity to see um, basically the view that I was seeing when I was drawing. So I'm continuing with all of these reds. I've got a variety of reds going from uh, yellow and um, through orange, through a variety of different reds. And later on, you'll see me get, get into some other colors to try to neutralize and darken some of the red surfaces. So I again I go back and forth, back and forth, and if you can remember if you watched the last video on uh, just those simple spheres that I drew, you are seeing here that I am going to make this drawing opaque in comparison to the other drawing. 
I'll be using the blender just to make the surface of my drawing look smoother, but not so much to blend the colors because I'm blending them as I'm drawing myself. I'm not, I don't really need the blender to do that. You're also going to notice when you start working with colored pencils um, and applying this much color, you're going to notice something called bloom. And bloom is when the wax that's inside the colored pencil starts to come to the surface and creates this milky look on the surface of your drawing paper. And you're going to see me take a just a Kleenex, just a tissue, and with little circular motions, I'm kind of wipe that off the surface of, of what my of my drawing. So think about it if you've ever uh, like put wax on your car and you're kind of using a circular motion to kind of smooth and lift the wax. That's kind of what you're doing here. You're not going to use a lot of pressure and you're just going to lift and you'll see that uh, shortly at some point. So um, again I'm going in and I'm filling in but I'm really looking at what's you know what I'm looking at now because I'm doing it uh, this drawing on blue paper and I'm creating a red apple all right the final drawing is not going to have the same uh, warm intensity as the real life photograph I would be able to achieve that easier on warm paper but I've decided to show you that it's still possible to create um, something red on a blue paper or to create something warm. Remember that, that colors have temperatures and the warm uh, colors are yellow, orange, and red and the many versions of them and the cool colors are green, blue, and violet and the many versions of them. But also each color in the color on the color wheel can have a warm or cool version of it. So you're going to see when you look at your colored pencils, you're going to have some reds that I would say, if you call, want to call them fire engine reds, those are your warm reds. The reds that start to go towards purple are your cool reds, and it's because they have um, blue in them to make them more into the purple tones. So I wanted to show you how it's quite possible to draw a warm um, colored object on a cool toned paper. So you're going to be able to select the, the color of paper that you want to use for the subject that you'll be drawing for uh, your assignment this week. You notice that I have not touched the shadow at all. That's because the shadow is going to be handled in a different way. If you remember back from the last video, um, the shadows should be applied in a very thin manner because the shadow is not an object. The shadow is just the absence of light which the apple is casting a shadow onto that blue paper. So the shadow will um, be the same color as the paper but darker and duller. So here's a little tissue and the wiping off of that um, what's called bloom and that will happen. Uh, you're, when you finish a drawing with Prismacolor you wipe the bloom off and then um, if you don't want the bloom to come back, because the bloom might come back, what you can do is spray it with an acrylic fixative. And um, you can just, you can buy those at any craft store and just read the directions. You want to shake the can well and you want to give it uh, a few light coats, not a heavy coat. Hairspray can also work in the same way. And the rule of thumb when you're spraying a drawing is you start spraying on the outside so you can line your surface maybe with newspapers if you're inside the house and you start spraying before you ever get to the drawing so that by the time your spray can arrives at the drawing it's just a mist is falling. If you start it when you're on top of the drawing sometimes um, it spurts out and leaves droplets so you don't want to ruin your drawing at the end when you try to, to fix it. Um, so I'm going back and forth and as you see I, I go back between darker and lighter colors because with Prismacolor you can definitely draw on top of something dark. The only thing is, is that you will not be able to totally cover it up. This apple has a lot of um, variety in its skin. There's like a mottled texture with some nice uh, 
a warm yellow showing through and I try to add those in towards the end. So here I am starting with the shadow and I'm using blue, dark blue, and a, a blue that is pretty much the same color as the paper but a little bit duller. Um, and I'm going to be putting the shadows in very thinly. When you look at shadows that are cast by different objects, in this case because it's a round object and it's casting shadow and um, the light source that I have. By the way, for this drawing I did use an artificial light. So when you're doing your drawing at home, if you don't have the time to complete your drawing in one sitting, make sure, just like the other drawings we've done, make sure that you set up a light source that so you can keep your light consistent or that you set it up near um, a, a window and you work at the same time of day to complete the drawing uh, if it takes you several days. So anyway, back to the idea of the shadow. So with this round object, the shadow and the kind of light I have, the shadow, you can see it from the photograph. There is a dark edge, but there's also kind of a, that dark edge at the very end where, where the, it kind of touches the paper surface is a little bit fuzzy. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm using a lighter pencil and I'm trying to kind of put that fuzziness in. Oh, another thing is you notice that I put my real object, the apple, on the same blue paper that I'm drawing on. That's a really good um, way to make sure that your shadow is realistic. So put your object, or whatever it is that you're going to be drawing, put it on the same colored paper so that you see what's happening with the shadow. So again, I'm, I'm being fussy now. I'm, I'm adding things uh, because you can, I'm sure by now you, you see that as you draw, you see more and more as you're drawing. And just things that you may not have seen right in the beginning, you see as your drawing is complete or, or coming to a completion, you see more details and you want to put those details in. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm just kind of tweaking to get this drawing to be as good as I can make it. And when you look at the photograph in the corner and you look at my drawing, you see that my drawing's not as brilliant. It's not as brilliant as the real apple, but it's certainly convincing as a red apple on that blue paper. If I had drawn it on the red paper, uh, it probably would have been more brilliant. But the other thing is I like the contrast of this blue paper. When you're drawing in full color, like I'm doing here, on a toned surface, the toned surface can act as your background space. And in this case, I'm not going to do anything to the background because I like that blue. It looks like the apple is on a blue paper. So again, um, just like we did with last week's drawing, my blue becomes just part of my drawing and is not, um, is not going to be I'm not going to add anything to it or change its color. So that's why it's really important that the shadow remains um, thin so that it looks like a shadow and doesn't look like its own object. So I'm just about at the end and I'm going to, to rub this again with a tissue. And you don't want to rub so hard that you take off um, color, but you want to rub so that you get that bloom off. And here's the final drawing. Good luck with yours.